I want to do an example of potential energy, um, gravitation potential energy. Suppose I have three masses. The question is, how much energy is stored in the system consisting of those three masses? And really, what I need to do is just consider the potential energy of every pair in, that makes up the system. So I want to look at the potential energy between these two, the potential energy between these two, and the potential energy between these two. That's going to give me the total energy. I just got to look at all the pairs. And that's my total energy store. If I were going to write code, for example, uh, and let's say I wanted to do this for an arbitrary number of particles, four, ten, whatever, how would I write an equation that describes this? Well, I have to include all the terms. I actually have to sum over all the masses. But there's two masses, so I'm going to have two indices. And I'm going to sum over all the i's and all the j's. But I cannot have i equal j, because that doesn't make sense. And then I got to multiply this whole thing by a half. You would do this on a computer and you were going to code it. You would have to actually code in this, this equation. And I have to throw in a one half in there. Why do I have to throw in one half? Well, when I do this summation, so what does the summation mean? Well, for j equals one, I'm going to put the values of 1 and 2. I can't put for j equals 1 here and for the values of uh, i equals 2 and i equals 3. For j equals 2, I'm going to put the values of 1 and 3 for i. For j equals 3, I'm going to put the values of 1 and 2 for i. What I've done though is I've counted each one of these twice by doing that, so I have to put a 1 half in front. So if I were to code this, in for an arbitrary number of particles, I would have to write something like this. Because I'd have to know what the values of R and J are. Okay? Now, another way to look at this, or another way to come up with this, is the following. Because the energy stored in this is also, it also basically is, is the amount of work it takes for me to assemble those charges from masses. Okay? I'll say that one more time. The amount of energy stored in the system is the same thing as the amount of work that's required to assemble this thing. I'm going to give you an analogy. If I raise this marker from here to here, if I raise it at distance h, I've increased the potential energy by, by mgh. Where did that energy come from? It came from me. I did an amount of work equal to MGH to raise the potential energy of the system. So the amount of work that I do to assemble the system of particles is the energy stored in the system. And so, how do I go about doing this? Well, let's say we have these particles infinitely far, far apart. And I put the first one, M1 here. How much work is required to put that there? Well, there's no field. There's nothing. If 
fact, the, the fact that I put that mass there, I've now distorted space. This is producing the field. That required no work to put it there. I think the second particle, and put it here, and two, which is the distance of R12 from N1. Now, I have to do work on that, that object. That work that I do is reflective of the energy stored in the system, and so the work that I do is minus G M1 M2 over R12. I take the third particle and bring it here, I'm not sure you can see the video. Well, now I gotta consider how much work it takes to put this object here, and that basically is the potential energy that this thing has. The total work that's required to assemble this is the sum of these three terms, which gives you this. And so that's the energy stored in the system. If I want to find out the potential energy just of this object, then I would just consider these two terms. If I want to find the potential energy of this one, then I would just look at these two terms. I want to find the potential energy at this location, where N2 is, then that's going to be the sum of these two terms, the terms that have it in 2 But for the whole system, I have to include all three terms. 